Oh, what a Savior. That's a true statement, ain't it? I'd like to welcome everybody out tonight. Crowd's a little low, but still a good-looking bunch. Still a good-looking crowd. We'll say we're the cream of the crop here tonight. We're, I heard you laugh, Patrick, but we really are. Now, it's good to have everybody here, and if you're visiting, I don't see any visitors other than their friend. He's not really a, a visitor anymore. He's been here enough now to... Uh, he's just one of us, so I'd like to welcome welcome him here. For announcements, real quick, I won't uh, go through all of them, but October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and uh, I didn't read this this morning, but in the foyer, there's going to be a basket to place cards uh, out here for Brother Kevin, so if you want to write a card and put out in the basket for him, I'm sure him and his family would appreciate it. Uh, the 12th, this Wednesday night, and I really want to make sure that I – get this message across. We really want to support our church at Higgins Chapel on Wednesday night. Uh, Kevin's going to be preaching and the choir's going to be singing. So they've announced that Southside Church is coming to support uh, Kevin. So I want to make sure that we have a very good turnout for that. I think that would really, really be good if we can have uh, a good number for that. The van will be leaving here at 630. So uh, if you want to ride the van, be here just a few minutes before. And also, you can follow the van. If you don't know how to get there and you want to follow the van up, that'll, that'll be good, too. But let's do try to make a, a real good turnout, turnout for that. Ladies' Auxiliary is uh, 630 at Pat Renfro's house uh, on the 17th. And then uh, the 29th, I'll just mention this quickly, is the Fall Festival and our Trunk or Treat, which we talked about this morning. Going to be looking for everybody to bring some soups and uh, chilies and cornbread. Also decorate your car for Trunk or Treat, and the kids can dress up. Um, if they want to, there will be some games and some activities that goes on that night. And the last thing is on the 30th of this month, we're going to have our Pastor Appreciation Dinner after the morning service so everybody bring a covered dish and also that's uh, going to be you sunday so i don't think i missed anything uh that's in, an immediate announcement anyways it's time to go before the lord in prayer and um, i was just told before the service started that sister emily garland's daughter had passed today about one o'clock so we need to remember that family in our prayers uh, we need to remember Kevin. It's already been mentioned. He's at uh, revival. Going to be in revival this week, and need to really pray and hold him up and support him through that revival. Brother Bernie, let's remember him. Is there any other? Uh, Robin, Robin Ramsey. Let's remember her. I believe Bobby's headed back uh, tonight. Uh, coming back home. He's been down there for a couple of days, so we'll get an update tomorrow on on her and how she's doing. Remember Brother Roger. No, that's good. Yeah, several from our church traveling. We do need to remember Remember those. Is there any other spoken request? Let's remember this. Let's remember uh, Brother Randy. I don't. I didn't understand this morning if he had already been transferred. I believe he said that he would either been transferred or was transferring to Quillen, which is a good thing for him. So uh, hopefully see some good results and hear some good report this week on on Randy. Any other spoken prayer request? Remember Sister Ruby. If there's no other spoken prayer request, are there any unspoken shown by just uplifting your hands? Hands up all over the house. Let's remember these unspoken requests. Everybody that can and will gather around the altar. I'll ask David Butler, if he will, to lead us in prayer.
Craig T's are going to sing for us. Thank God for the message this morning. Thank God for the hope that we have going to a better home. We are coming to church and trying to think of what I was going to sing tonight, but uh, this right here goes along with the service this morning, and uh, we do have a better go home to go to. Since I've heard about a better home, I would leave this old world. slip away most any day to heaven's shore I'll find sweet rest beyond the gate forevermore yes I'll reach home oh praise the Lord some sweet day Let's have a, a song or a testimony. He's sitting like he's in a raised position. He's ready to come on, but I'm holding him back just for a minute. All right, Brother Aaron, come ahead. Hey, man, good evening. I say I thank, thank y'all for having me back and 
putting up with me again. That's why I'll tell churches, oh, well, you must have been able to handle me last time, and I thank you for having me back. And I'd like to say, uh, most of all, I thank you for what the Lord's done for me. I know I travel to a pretty good bunch of churches, but I know that something's always the same and everywhere I go, and that's the Lord. He's the he's same anywhere you go and any corner you can turn to go look, He's always there. And I, I want to thank Him tonight because I would surely be nothing if it was not for God. I couldn't do anything in this life. I couldn't even stand up on my own two feet if it was not for God. And He's just been way too good to me for, for the things for the way I've lived my life in the past. But I'm thankful He don't look at just what you've done in the past. He looks at what you are. And He sees if you have a desire in your heart and He's faithful and just to forgive you. And I've messed up more times than I can count, but He's always faithful enough to forgive me. Amen. I'm going to try to be obedient tonight and try to share with you the thought the Lord's placed on my heart. And I'm going to be reading in Mark chapter number 5. It's where the Lord has led us to read tonight. and It's Mark chapter, no, chapter number 5, starting in verse number 21. Amen. And the word reads in Mark chapter number 5 and verse 21, it says, And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people were gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus, by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And certain and a certain woman, which had issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, and came in and pressed behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she fell in her body, and she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press, and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and saying, Thou who touched me? And he looked around about to see her that had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what, had, what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for everything you've done for us and blessed us with. And allow us to be able to gather in your church house one more time. And I pray that we could always be that which you would want us to be. Lord, help us to set ourselves to the side for just a minute, Lord, that we could just come and have church tonight. That we could have you come into our heart, Lord, and preach the gospel in the way that you would see fit. Lord, help us always stand in the truth and in the Word. And always in the Spirit, Lord, help us never be a stumbling block to our brothers and sisters in Christ. But help us to deliver the truth of all that can be a help and encouragement towards them, Lord. Help us that we can give your Spirit free liberty tonight. And help us be able to go and say it's been good to be in God's house. I thank for everything you've done for us and blessed us with. Our dear Heavenly Father, I pray. Amen. And I want to say I'm thankful for this scripture. I'm sure a lot of people know of the woman that had the issue of blood. And it's a very common scripture. And whenever the Lord placed this on my heart, I was reading and studying and saying, Lord, what would you have me to preach on about this? What would you want me to just tell my brothers and sisters tonight? And the thought the Lord's put on my heart is know where your help comes from. Know where you can go and who you can go to. Because there's a lot of places you can go in this life that will... Give, give help, but it won't be the right kind of help. It won't be the help that you spiritually need. It won't be the help that you need for your family or anybody else. But amen, through and by God, He can help you get the help you need. It all comes through and by His grace. Amen. And in our scripture tonight, the woman, I truly believe she might not have been saved all the way or been completely where she needed to be with God, but she had seen all the miracles He had done. He had seen all the miracles he had performed all about and somebody knew of God. Somebody knew of the miracles that had been performed and she had to get to this man because nobody else could help. 
Amen. It talks about the physician said she had went and tried everything. I think she tried everything she could, every direction she thinks she could go to, but nothing helped. It only got worse. Amen. Have you ever been in that position? Whenever you look for something in this life, for somebody or someone to try to help you, and nothing can help except God. Nothing can give you enough encouragement in this life. Nothing can put a little bit of fire in your heart unless it is God giving that Holy Spirit upon your heart. Amen. I'm thankful I can go to the cross tonight. I'm thankful I can have a Savior in my heart that shows me of the right way. Amen. There's so many of the people in this life that only want the help of the world. They only want to go in the direction they want to go. Whenever God tries to help them in the way, they want to kick Him to the curb. Amen. It's a very easy thing to kick God to the curb. Say, well, preacher, I'd never do that. You never say never if you're out of the will of God. Amen. You don't know what you'll do. But amen, I'm thinking I don't have to be out of the will of God. Amen. It's all of a matter of a decision that you have to make. Amen. I was talking with a, with a fellow there at work about people just making poor decisions in their life. Amen. He was talking about just they, they can't help themselves, but they choose not to. They don't want no help. They want to do it all on their own. Amen. I'll say I'm one of those people as well. I'll say, well, I'll just carry it all by myself. I'll do it all on my own. Amen. But I'm going to tell you tonight, there's some things you just can't carry by yourself. Amen. You can't do it alone tonight. But amen, God never intended you to be alone tonight. He intended you to get some help from Him and always go to the Father and have intercession with Him. But it said she tried everything. She tried everything she knew to do. But she said, if I could just touch his clothes, that I could be made whole. Amen. She touched him and Christ knew that something that went out of him and healed somebody. I think he knew her before it even started. Amen. But he knew she was going to be there. I want you to think of the place that Christ was in whenever this happened. He said there's a multitude around him and there's all thronged around him. Amen. Whenever it says that, that means there's a crowd. There's a whole pack around him. So I'm sure there's dozens of people touching him as he went on by. But he knew of one that touched him and said, Someone touched me. Amen. I remember there's one day out of the whole crowd, the whole crowd of my church, the Lord noticed me out of everybody else. He saw something in me that nobody else did. He saw something that I could be one day through him by his grace. And he called me out. He said, Aaron, you better make sure you make heaven your home today and make the right decisions. And I'm trying to give you the help that no one else can give. Amen. Don't you remember the day that you've been saved? Amen. If you haven't been saved, you can't get it. Amen. I want you to know where your help comes from tonight. If you don't get nothing else from this message, amen, don't think nothing of me. I'm just a messenger, man. Amen. I want you to know where you can get your help tonight. Whether it's been something you're going through in the workplace or spiritually, Lord, or amen, if you've lost a loved one, amen. Whenever I heard Kevin call me and said, I've lost a brother, amen. Amen. My heart hurt. Amen. I don't know all of you by heart tonight. But amen, whenever I know a brother or sister has went and made heaven their home. Amen. My heart does hurt for them. But amen, I wouldn't bring them back tonight. Amen. I know if they've lived the way they're supposed to, we shouldn't want to bring them back. We should rejoice to meet them one day. Amen. I know everybody's heard the saying. Sin only hurts me and me only. Amen. It hurts everybody else around you as well. It does not just affect you. But I want you to look at that that mindset. Amen. I want you to look at it in a different way. Y'all just bear with me tonight. Amen. Whenever God helps you, it don't just affect you only. Amen. People can see the help God has provided you tonight. They can see all the, the things He's done for you in your life. And they say, I wonder what he or she has. Amen. I wonder how they got that help from somebody. Amen. You got it from the Lord Savior Jesus Christ. Whenever he saved your old wretched soul, saying, I got help from Calvary. Amen. Amen. Whenever God helps you, he don't just help you only, he helps the people around you. So next time you think, well, sin only bothers me. Amen. It does affect everybody else. Amen. But whenever God helps you, it affects everybody else too. 
I told Kevin whenever he called me to come and uh, come for him tonight. I told him I'd be praying for you. Amen. It's hard to lose a loved one in the church house, especially when it's a rock. Amen. But amen. The role does have to be filled. Amen. There is another light that has to so shine. Amen. That you might have to pick up another duty. Amen. Amen. To carry on the part. Amen. But whenever you have a duty in your heart, you don't have to carry it alone. I've been preaching about a year and a couple months now. Is a year back in 4th of July of this year. It was a year. Amen. But every message I preach in just that short span, a lot of these others have preached for many, many decades, half a century even. Amen. I've only been doing this a year. Every message I've delivered, every church I've had to go and stand, I've had the help of God in my heart. He's been with me every step of the way, man. And whenever God helps you, you should have a little bit of fire in your heart. You should be able to rejoice and say, I thank God for helping me in all of my endeavors. He said whenever she finally touched his garment, he said she was healed straight away. I believe it was like a flip of a switch. If she was made perfect and made whole, just because she got to Christ. Amen. She just wanted to make it to Christ, just to touch his garment. That's all I want tonight. I don't want to just make it to Christ one day. I want to come and meet Him. I don't care about anything else in this life, how much money I have, how nice of a vehicle I've got, or how many trips I go on, amen. I just want to make it to Christ. So don't forget you've got help in this life. You have help in all of your endeavors. You just have to come to Him for it. There's so many times I want to buck up and say, I can do it all by myself. I can do this. I don't. This is too little for God. I have to say, oh me. There's nothing too big or too small for Christ. Amen. Christ wants to be in your life. He wants to be associated with you and you with Him. Amen. So how much are you letting God help spiritually tonight? Amen. I want you all to listen to me. Amen. How much are you letting God help you tonight? Amen. The lost man can be helped. Amen. But they have to let somebody help. Amen. Whether it's a, the worst drug addict or the, or the dopey or the drunk. Amen. They cannot, help, they cannot get help unless they help themselves. They have to let God work in their life. Amen. You can't change them. I can't change them. I can only change old Aaron. I can only do me tonight. So are you, gonna, you can only help get your salvation where it needs to be. You can only get the help for you. You can't get the help for nobody else or your brother, your sister, mom and dad, nobody. It's only for you. It's left up to them to ask for their help. You can't pray for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And I told Kevin over the phone too. I said, hey man, whenever one, whenever one person in the church hurts, we all should hurt because we're all one family in this. And whenever one should rejoice, we all should rejoice. Amen. We're all trying to have the same goal tonight. Amen. I just want to make heaven my home and have the help of God along the way. In verse number 33 at the end of it, said, But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. Amen. She believed she, had the mind of, she was scared. She said, well, have I done something wrong? Because hey, I've went and tried to get some help. Amen. The devil's going to put it in your mind. saying you don't need to ask for help tonight. You don't need to go for God to nothing. Amen. He said, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing that. But amen, brother, if you have something to do with God, any part or any time of your life, you shouldn't be ashamed of it. You should be proud of it. But she said she told him all the truth. So whenever God comes in your heart, whenever He's trying to get to talk to you, you might not have even done something wrong. He just wants to talk to you. Tell Him the whole truth. Talk to Him like He's your friend. He should be your friend tonight. Amen. I told Trinity last week, hey, people probably think I'm crazy driving by me because I'm talking to myself all the time. Amen. But I'm not talking to myself, amen. I'm talking to my Heavenly Father. But are you telling him the whole truth tonight? 
Are you telling him, I need help, God? I need help. It's okay to ask for help. I ain't a man that walked this life that didn't need help. Christ asked God to help him on the cross, amen. So if he's able to help Christ, he's able to help you and me. But I like this part right here. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Thy faith hath made thee whole. That's all it takes tonight is a little bit of faith. A little bit of faith to put in God and He can help you when no one else can. Do you remember the faith He put in your heart when He saved you? I remember for me, I took the first step and I don't remember the rest. I felt like I was flying. Whenever I be about down and made things right with God, everything shined a little bit brighter. Hey Amen. I'll just tell you this. I've been colorblind since I was a little feller, but I swore I saw colors that day. God can do miracles in your life. You just have to have faith in Him to make you whole to have miracles. I'm thankful for Him tonight. And it says, And straight away the fountain... Of her blood was dried up straight away. And I'll tell you tonight, the Lord can work in ways it can happen in a matter of seconds. Then there's times you have to have patience as well in getting the help. I'll say just for myself, last week I've been praying about something, asking God since probably the middle of June, saying, Lord, can you just work this out for me? I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what direction to go in. I just need help. Amen. It didn't happen the next week or the months after. Amen. This is October. I'm talking back in June. Amen. God finally worked it out last week. Amen. I'm thankful that I have the help of God in my heart. That He's always there to help me when no one else can. Amen. I love God tonight and I'm proud of Him. If you have the help of God in your life, you should have a little bit of fire as well. Hey Amen. There ain't no excuse for me. He's been too good for me not to say something. I've just got to have my little bit of a testimony right here. I love him tonight. He's been way too good to me than I deserved. Hey Amen. He should have kicked me to the curb a long time ago. But he loved me instead. He loved me instead and forgave me. And he's blessed me more than I've ever deserved. All because it was nothing of me. But he helped me realize I needed help. And amen, he gave me a way to find it. So do you know, you after tonight, nobody should have no excuse not to find help tonight. So next time you find yourself in a place that I just don't know what direction to go to, I don't know who to go or where to go, amen, just go to God. He'll work everything out, I promise. Amen, standing on the promises of God. Amen, I was lost. But now I'm found because of the help. I love him tonight, church. I love him. He's my best friend. He's my heavenly father. He's my everything tonight. And God should be first and foremost in your life. Everything else will fall into place as long as you love God. Amen. Ain't you, ain't you thankful for the help tonight? Amen. That's my heart.